I'm here to present you some um, results about um, a question you have been asked to, to us um, by a water agency in, a, in another region in France, in Burgundy and in a special co context of protected designation of origin again um, usually work in this sort of vineyards and so the title is which risk assessment of water quality in protected designation of origin vineyards in Burgundy in France so I do not have uh, a map as well <laughs> as the other presentation so we've got uh, environmental sustainability, which is included uh, now in the market strategy uh, and even if in high quality uh, vineyard. So it had been uh, uh, described uh, by, by somebody else. Uh, several uh, environmental compartments with, again, uh, mistakes, I'm sorry, are impacted by one growing systems and uh, we've got different compartments like water, soil, air and biodiversity I was talking about a few minutes before. Since 2000 we, we work uh, with wine growers directly uh, and with water agencies assessing uh, viticulture impacts and uh, I presented uh, other results in Terra Congress in Italy uh, a few years ago. Maybe you remember them. In Burgundy, problem of bad result of water quality measurements uh, are in area which are not far from vineyards. So there were a little bit of problem of communication uh, between the society and the, the wine industry. So we had um, water agency and one grower association, BIVB, Bureau Anthropocène des Vins de Bourgogne, and water agency, uh, donc Agence de l'eau Rhin, uh, Rhone, uh, Méditerranée Corse, who decided to, to order a diagnostic of uh, risk assessment for water quality in the vineyards, which were not far from the area where they the, there were bad measurement of water quality. The point of this paper is to, is to present which are the risk assessment uh, results on water quality in three different areas and uh, the hypothesis to test is if, uh, if pesticide has a, a role in water quality uh, water quality and we will focus on details on surface water and groundwater quality results because they are not exactly the same and they do not deal with the same um, factors, impact factors. We had three areas, one is in Beaune, in Côte de Beaune, uh, in Burgundy and you can see the little map with the the, the field which have been uh, selected a sample of field in red and in uh, green the second uh, the second area is in Rully in uh, Côte Chalonnaise uh, in the south of Beaune and you've got the same uh, signific signification of the colors in the field which have been calculated and the last region is uh, in Côte de Nuit uh, the protected designation area of Vaune Romane and uh, with also uh, some fields studied. Uh, so the PDO distribution of field in the three, three studied area is in the first table. You can see we have a field of Grand Cru, field of Premier Cru and field of Village. And the, I'm sorry, the the distribution between the areas and the PDO, um, PDO level are not uh, equal because uh, uh, one, one of the fact is that we wanted to have very different situation of soils and uh, climate um, even if it, it's, an, it's in a very small area and the other factor is that uh, we are proposing to the wine growers to work with us and so they are volunteers and uh, because they give a lot of information to us and so 
we do have a relationship of confidence and uh, um, and so some people d doesn't want to know and doesn't want to give the information. So th that was the two the two main reason why we don't have a, a thirty percent of Concru, thirty percent of uh, Premier Cru, and thirty percent of Village. Uh, and the second table is uh, can show you uh, the difference of the production system, and we wanted also one the one of the um, the thing was to to the hypothesis was to to deal with the production system and to see if there are differences uh, between the risk assessment um, between integrated organic and biodynamic uh, system of production. So the rules to for this are the same that uh, for the production pro protected designation of origin uh, criteria. The method uh, methods we used, uh, so we made a network of fields because of course we we can't survey and interview uh, the wine growers of the of the, all the fields of each uh, different area. Then we did interview of practices, practices in the specific field, and interview of characteristic of the farm and uh, of the vineyard field for uh, two years. And the studied years, the practices are for the 2011 and 2012 um, vintage. The method we use to assess uh, water quality risk is one indicator, IFI, uh, which is a pesticides indicator from the Indigo method, uh, which is a multi-criteria assessment of pesticides impact developed on access. And this gives a mark between zero and 10. Zero uh, is uh, when you have a maximum risk uh, for environment and especially in our presentation of, for water quality. Seven, there is an acceptable risk and ten, there is no risk. The first results uh, is uh, the, the global results of the indicator, uh, pesticides indicator and leads us that um, this, uh, we have uh, we have a global assessment of uh, water pollution in Burgundy uh, for the two studied years. And the global risk for water quality is very low. There are very few fields, so we have, uh, your memory, we have 32 uh, fields in the three uh, area. Uh, a very few field has a mark uh, under seven. Uh, so three in uh, three on 32 field in 2011 and, um, and seven in 2012. And we have only one field which has uh, a mark under three. We will go in detail uh, later. So I show you uh, the, the first graph. Uh, and so you've got uh, the general region for the pesticides indicator, IFI. On the, on the bottom, you've got a first group of field, fields, which is Bone area. The second group is Rulli area, and the third group is Von Romane area. So you've got a, a separation between the three groups. Uh, on this axis, you've got the mark of uh, pesticides indicator from 0 to 10, and you've got a green line which uh, is on the seven, which, and so everything which is up to seven is okay. And uh, so to focus on the, the little uh, red lines, uh, so you've got bad, bad results for the pesticide indicator, and it, it is especially due to uh, rate of copper which is used. They put a lot of copper to protect uh, uh, the vineyard against uh, pest. Uh, another, another reason, especially for this one, is the rate of other active ingredients which are in pesticides, like, like uh, Folpel, Fosetilal, if you know that, uh, that active ingredients. And uh, for this, um, uh, this, uh, this field, uh, the main reason why there is a, a lower uh, result for pesticides indicator is the characteristic of the soil of the field, uh, which, uh, which is very favorable for the, uh, 
the movement of the pesticides uh, in the soil and going to groundwater. So this is exactly the same graph, but uh, you can see, yes, and another result is that globally there is no significant differences between the type of production systems. So it doesn't depend on integrated organic or biodynamic uh, system of production. This is exactly the same graph, except that on the bottom you've got the PDO level, premier cru, grand cru, and village, and the result, of course, are, are the same. And the conclusion about the PDO uh, um, link with the, uh, the water risk is uh, exactly the same than, than with the production system. There is no link. So let's go in detail about groundwater um, impact. So groundwater impact, so this is one of the detail in the big uh, pesticides indicator, which include also um, uh, biodiversity and air uh, uh, assessment. But here we focus on water. And groundwater risk is higher than uh, surface water risk for most of the field uh, and the PDO for the three PDO areas. So we have respectively 22 and 27 field, which are down to seven on 10. So these are the results, so the graph is exactly the same. You've got the production system on the bottom, you've got uh, two blocks for each studied year, and you've got the pesticides indicator uh, on the axis from zero to 10, and the green line for the seven. And you, you see the, the two different uh, pointed out field. And so the, the explanation of these results are the, the rate of uh, active ingredient pesticides applied uh, during the, the vineyard management. And also, I, I told you uh, before, uh, the characteristic of the soil and the slope of the field, which is favorable to uh, the migration of active ingredient of pesticides to crown water. So this is the same with uh, the PDO different levels. And finally, uh, we've got the results for surface water risk uh, for the fields. And surface water risk is lower than uh, groundwater risk for most of the field. And it's more uh, spectacular than in the global results for uh, EFI uh, pesticides indicator. There are only two fields who has a risk under seven for the first studied year, and we have three fields uh, for the second studied year. So here are the, the results just uh, as uh, to illustrate. Uh, so to discuss about the method, uh, indigo indicators references, so the 0, the 7 and the 10, have been designed at the beginning of the 2000s in vineyard condition of production from this period. And in my opinion, it would be um, to use more uh, the difference to see um, more the difference between fields, uh, it would be interesting to recalculate the references 0, 7, and 10 uh, more severe, maybe, for the next calculation in the, in the 2020s. Uh, the second point is that indigo indicators results can be communicated by the water agency to its partners. <laughs> they were very afraid of that. They, when they order the, the, the job to, to, to our team, they were afraid of the results, but now they are super happy. Uh, Indigo indicators are a robust and cheap method to assess uh, water risk of viticulture um, every year and can perform their practices. You know, I didn't show you today, but if you manage to see the presentation of, um, of Soave in 2010, you will see it's possible to go to the risk for each compartment of environment for each active ingredient of pesticides. So I show you very global results. 
quotes, but you can go in details and change one active ingredient, which is a problem for, for your field. And so you have an agronomist, uh, um, you can discuss with the one grower and change the practices uh, one by one to, to make it, uh, to make the risk for environment the, the lower it can be. Of course, you can't change the field, but you can you can change you can change the practices. To conclude, uh, so our yeah, it's over. Okay, there is no there is no risk for water quality. Okay, uh, one growers are aware of um, groundwater risk and already managed to reduce the rate and use different pesticides and choose the right moment to spray pesticide according to the field characteristics. And uh, water modules of uh, pesticides indicator is very useful decision to, to manage um, vineyard territories according to more and more environmental friendliness. Um, on a financial support point of view, Water Agency will use the result to communicate to his partners. And on a research point of view, continuing using indigometers uh, will be very useful to, uh, to complete the database and to make it more robust. And I really, well, it's a dream, but I really uh, would like to go further and develop a cell phone application to, to make it used not only by researcher and uh, advisor, but uh, also by uh, people in the field directly, without us. Thank you very much for your time.